What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we have another viewer's car. This is Edwin's Audi RS6 Nagaro edition. Very, very cool RS6. It is part of the last 150 RS6 C7s they made. Uh, it is kind of their goodbye to the RS6 of this generation and it is amazing. So when Edwin sent us a message asking if we wanted to drive his car, of course we said yes. Absolutely love that you guys are still uh, submitting your own cars. If you have a cool car and you want us to drive it, let us know. Send us an email, address is on screen right now. Send us some info and some pics and maybe your car will be at this spot next time. Uh, so, we're going to have a look at it, we're going to look at what makes this RS6 Nogaro special and then we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn Blast. Now, the Nogaro edition, of course, I'm just going to call it the Nogaro, uh, is special because you get this Nogaro paint, that is what the name suggests, of course, it is uh, the color that was introduced on the Audi RS2 back in the day, which is one of the most epic Audis ever built, I think. Five cylinder, big turbo, uh, Porsche wheels and brakes, absolutely epic, epic car. So it's cool that they kind of paid tribute to that car with this special edition. So I think the blue suits it really well because these C7s, you see them a lot in like Nardo gray or regular gray or black, but you hardly ever see a, a cool color on it. So yeah, I really like this. It would have been cooler if you ask me if they would have also like chromed out everything that is black now or, or have that like old school Audi, um, that sort of brushed aluminium look. It does have these like gray mirrors and uh, those gray accents in the front bumper on the side there. I quite like that. Uh, that definitely gives it a different look, but it would have been cool if you had like this blue versus brushed aluminium look. Would have been a bit like RS4, RS6, Back in the day, like 20 years ago, I, I think those specs are really, really cool. Uh, maybe that's just a bit of nostalgia as well. So Quattro badge in the grill there as well. And then we've got these 21 inch wheels part of the Nogaro edition as well, black. And behind that, the optional Audi ceramic brakes. Really good, absolute must have on this car uh, because the top speed is also raised to 320 kilometers an hour from 305. Again, black. Window surrounds, would have been cool if that was chrome. Same goes for the roof rails. Uh, I guess just picture it. I think, oh man, I would love to have a car like this and then just chrome everything out. Just bring it back to like old school. Really nice. So a mod that Edwin made to the Nogaro is a very good one actually. Uh, the Nogaro edition comes with an Akrapovic exhaust, titanium front to rear, so from the downpipe all the way back here. And you get these Audi Sport, um, a Krapovich tips that are basically this shape, but then you have two round uh, tailpipes inside this shape. I'll pull up a picture right now so you guys can see what I mean. And he didn't like that, so he decided to put like the regular uh, stock tips on there, which I quite like. I think this is a better look for the car. You also get an upt badge because the car has upt tuning from the factory. That is part of the Nogaro edition as well. Nogaro. It's a weird word, Nagaro. Maybe it's because I've said it so many times. So let's check out the engine, the four liter V8 by Turbo. With in the RS6 performance, which this is based on 605 horsepower, 750 newton meters of torque. This Nagaro edition gets a little more, 100 horsepower extra. So 705 horsepower and 130 newton meters, so 880, which is a healthy amount, I would say. Lovely, lovely drivetrain this. It, it still kind of holds up. Um, maybe also because they didn't really change that much for the C8, so for the next generation. Uh, but this still feels quite okay, quite fresh, I would say. Uh, we've got an RS6 logo there with Nagaro edition, one of 150, as you can see. Uh, carbon trim and then these lovely seats with blue stitching on the pattern there and uh, Another really cool option is the blue interior. So for 5,800 euros extra uh, You got this blue Center on the seats and the blue door panels as well also as like a throwback to the RS2 which is Beautiful. I've seen a couple for sale. Uh, absolutely love that Super cool, but Edwin liked this better. You know, this is a bit more subtle, but 
I really love the blue and I love the fact that they did that. Uh, so start it up, you will hear that a Krapovich exhaust. This thing is proper loud. <laughs> that is serious. Uh, and, and it sounds, I mean, it sounds really, really good, right? It's, it's not available. There we go. Oh, it sounds so dark and angry. Love that. Okay, so let's go for a drive. Now you can definitely see that this car has done, I don't know, like 75,000 kilometers. The Alcantara, you can see that it's, it's, yeah, it's basically gone. That's uh, always a drawback about these Alcantara parts in, in cars. When it gets a bit older, yeah, it starts to, uh, to show its age. Alrighty, so if you have Alcantara parts in your car, by the way, uh, you can also use our Fusion Skin Interior Hero, which has been developed as an Alcantara cleaner, but is suitable for your entire interior. So leather, plastics, carbon, Alcantara, you can use it for everything. So go check it out, link is in the description. Now, back to the car. Oh, it is a beast, this thing, it really is. Uh, 705 horsepower, it is a lot. And it sounds, oh, it sounds so good. This is like pre-OPF goodness. Uh, you do have these like, repetitive bangs every time you downshift or let off the throttle or most of the time you get those they always sound kind of the same but the v8 sounds so good oh it's so fast and it's got probably one of the best rev limiters out there. Oh, and if you time that shift, it's just so lovely. So let's do that in the tunnel. <laughs> it's so good. I think this rev limiter and uh, the one in the uh, C63 the 6.2 liter, I think those are the two best rev limiters. All V8s, maybe Ferrari as well. That's also pretty cool. So you do have Quattro all wheel drive, but in dynamic mode, it actually sends quite a bit of power to the rear, which is nice. You, you don't have that like super understeery uh, balance that you sometimes have with, with Quattro's, this actually feels pretty nice. Also because you have the performance pack as standard on the Nagaro, uh, the, I think the air suspension is also different. So it's actually quite a good car to drive. The, the steering is quite numb. Uh, it's not, you know, loaded with feel, but the car stays really flat and uh, yeah, kind of goes where you expect it to go, which is quite nice. And it doesn't seem to have that many, many issues with its weight which is quite nice it, it doesn't feel that heavy that's the limit of the tires there and there we go full throttle so as i said top speed should be 320 kilometers an hour in the Nagaro edition up from 305 and there we have the quintessential RS6 C7 mirror whistle uh, I don't know what that is but they all do that from like 270 ish kilometers an hour they start whistling downshift there and we also measured the 100 to 200 performance of course and we did a 7.2 second which is very quick uh, so it definitely has 705 horsepower we also did a 10.99 quarter mile so the performance is definitely there which is 
usually not really the case with up tuning uh, but on this one it's really good actually it also runs really well and we've got those lovely ceramic brakes to slow us down No problem in dynamic mode. That is 280, I think. Something like that. And I love the fact that you can still hear that V8. Even at higher speeds. That's mainly down to that Akrapovic exhaust because there actually is quite a bit of wind noise. <laughs> Just check every window there. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, we also did a 0 to 100 test. Now, we're, we're not able to get the launch control going, which is kind of weird because they do have it. But uh, the Nagaro edition is supposed to do 3.4 seconds and we did 3.2 without launch control. So, that's kind of weird, but you know, it's, it is really fast. 3.2 seconds in a C7, that is properly quick. I actually feel and hear those tires squealing. They don't really like it that much, but I think that's mainly the, the big wheel with the skinny tire and then the weight that is thrust upon it. Yeah, it's just a bit too busy to uh, to really stretch its legs and get close to that claimed top speed of 320 kilometers an hour. We did 310 GPS and Martijn said that it didn't really go faster than that, so maybe it's 320 on the speedo. Um, but yeah, I don't think we'll be able to get there uh, in the review. So go check out the Autobahn POV if you want to see the top speed we got. Click in the top right corner for that video. I might do a little run here to say goodbye to you guys and say goodbye to the Nagaro edition RS6. Thanks Edmund for taking it to us, really appreciate it and uh, have enjoyed driving it. To you guys, thanks for watching. You can check out this video on the right, this playlist on the left, or hit the button to subscribe to never miss an upload. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.